in the blue corner to my right, wearing the black trunks with the white accessories. He weighs in at 224 and a half pounds. His professional record reads 32 victories, one defeat, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from the Isle of Samoa and now boxes out of South Auckland, New Zealand, former WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, David Tua. Tua. Wearing the black trunks, red and white trim, he weighs in at 234 and a half pounds. He is undefeated in 29 professional bouts, 24 wins coming by way of knockout. He boxes out of received instructions in the dressing rooms. Obey my commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. Do you have any questions? This is, the belt is positioned properly, so from here down is a low below. I know we had some concerns. I wish you good luck, may God bless you. Shake hands, please. Fascinating strategic confrontation. Can Rachman outbox the quicker Vastly more experienced Tua. Can Tua overpower the bigger, heavier Rachman? Can either of them deal with the other's big punch? It's a, a wonderful set of questions for the two heavyweights to bring into the ring. <laughs> Just to reiterate what Larry Merchant said in the opening, Larry Merchant's choice as the most significant fight of 1998 in any weight class because so much is at stake for the two young heavyweights. Tua to the body with the left hook, Rachman with a right to the body and up top. Watch for Tua to come with that overhand right over Rachman's jab if he keeps jabbing low. Rockman believes his big advantage in the fight is a superior jab. He thinks that he should be able to outbox Tua as the result of it, and he's landing the jab early. And that should be his best weapon if he uses it properly. Another question. Can Tua force Rockman to fight at a faster pace? Uncomfortable for him. Rockman loves to fight at a snail's pace and measure himself round to round. Rockman already being warned for pushing off with the elbow, a persistent habit of his. Later, you'll see him lean all over Tua when Tua forces his way in. There's a sharp right hand to the top of Tua's head by Rockman, and Tua sneaks his left hook behind Rockman's guard. Rockman can continuously throw that jab like he's doing it, Jim. It is going to cause a problem for Tua. I think the jab has already slowed down Tua's advance and his desire to get in there and pressure Rockman. Another sharp right hand over the top by Rockman. Tua's left hook partially blocked. To his head pretty still as he sizes Rockman up and Rockman taking advantage of the still head to land the jab and occasional right hands. If anybody has made a strategic statement in round one, so far it's Hasim Rockman. Took by Tua, Rockman with a counter left of his own. As seen promised us in fighter meetings yesterday that he would finally unveil a left hook tonight. A punch that those of us who's watched him several times have been calling for as an addition to his arsenal. So far, he needs to unveil that left jab right there. That's doing everything it needs to do. It's keeping Tua at bay, it's keeping him off guard. It won't let Tua set up the big punches so far. Early tempo of the fight favoring Rachman. Tua finally unleashing.
having a flurry in the closing seconds of round one. Sense of urgency in Tua's corner from Lou Duva and Ronnie Shields after an ineffective first round by Tua. Rachman landing 20 of 43 jabs. That was the story of the round. And Hasim comes out firing one, two, three, four, five jabs and a right hand to begin round two. One problem is when, he, when a guy's throwing a good jab, you should attack his jab. Counter every time he sticks a jab out, and this can disencourage his jab. Tua is not doing this. And if he doesn't, he's going to make it an easy night for Rock. Rockman with a new trainer, Chuck McGregor. He first became familiar with McGregor when McGregor trained Obed Sullivan against him a year and a half ago in the Apollo Theater in New York. Now he's in McGregor's stable of seven or eight heavyweights out there in Arizona. Inside, he's still keeping that left hand a little low. So if Tua did throw the open hand right, it's a possibility that it could land. But he's not throwing it. Only seen a couple of overhand rights from Tua. Rockman saying disdainfully of Tua, hey, he's a two-punch fighter. He throws an overhand right and a left hook, occasionally an uppercut. I can deal with all that. When you can't deal with it is when Tua hurts you with one of those punches. And more and more it looks to me, Roy, as though if he hurts Rachman, he's going to have to get to the body first to do it. There he threw overhand right and landed the left hook because of landing that overhand right first. Tua starting to dig to the body. Logic tells you he must chop Rachman tight down that the body up. That goes the overhand right I was talking about. Absolutely. If, if Rockman has that left hand low, he has to go the overhand right. Oh, 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 oh. Rockman with a double left hook. Good left hook. Good looking left hook. Rockman has his right hand pinned to his the right side of his face and using his left hand to win the fight. Two at that time leading with the left hook and landed it. The right hand pinned to the side of his face is keeping him in the fight because it's keeping him from getting hit, hit with that big left hook. Exactly what I was saying. In other words, they're saying, he's saying to Tua, you're not going to beat me with your left hook. You're going to have to find another way. I don't know that you have another way. He's taking Tua's most effective punch away from him. Well, it's no mystery that when you fight David Tua, you got to take away the left hook. And Rockman doing an effective job of it, scoring with his own jab, adding multiplicity to his punch output. Terrific first two rounds for Hasim Rockman. Hasim Rock Rockman, excuse me, go ahead, Larry. I was just to say that Rockman took some good shots from Tua in that round. If he can take Tua's shots, he can make his own fight here. And you see the Letterman card. Rockman, the winner. In both of the first two rounds there. I was just going to say, Hasim Rahman, throughout most of his fights with Obed Sullivan and Jesse Ferguson, struggled to throw more than 40 or 50 punches around. In round two tonight, 94 Rahman punches. That's the kind of number you would expect to see from Tua if Tua were fighting his fight. Now Tua going inside and getting shoulder to shoulder with Rahman. This is what tends to happen in the latter stages of a Rachman fight when he tires and quits throwing his jab with as much regularity. Good straight right cross by Rachman and Tua gets to the body with a left hook. Rachman's respect for the left hand of Tua even shows in the fact that he's really not letting the right hand go. When we've seen him against lesser opponents, he throws that right hand almost recklessly. Overhand right landed for Tua. Rachman never moved the right hand guard from the side of his face so that Tua couldn't come back with the left hook. Yeah, Jim, but he still has to keep that left hand up, does Rachman, or else Tua's going to land that overhand right more often. Well, if he can do what he's done for the first two and two thirds rounds all the way through, it'll be an easy win. But stamina has been a question for Rachman in the past. Yeah, because he had the left hand up last round, but he dropped it again early this round already. Two over the combination, head and body. 
Now, Lou Duva and Ronnie Shields have a love affair with David Tua. There's perhaps no fighter in their entire group who they personally revere and have more affection for than David Tua. And part of it is because he is such a devoted learner day by day in the gym. And these body shots are going to prove to be effective later on in this fight if it continues to go, Jim. You saw two as late round comebacks against both David Izanrite, now David Izan, and against Tibia Hit him with the body shot. Hit him with the uppercut. Come back with the hook right hand. Okay? A lot of overhand right there. Other than that, after you jab, use your legs a little more. Relax. That way he's got to reach for that body shot. Here you see the combination that two are through at the end of the fight. Left, right to the head, left to the body. At this point, Rockman is landing roughly an average of 20 jabs per round to two is three. If you recall, before the fight, we said he had to extend his advantage with the jab to hold off Tua. He is doing exactly that. And, and landing 20, but just as important, throwing 44 per round. A high jab output, keeping Tua busy defending himself. Tua fights the hardest way, the wars of attrition. Overhand right lands for Tua. Tua has never been cut and has never been down. Right hand lands for Rachman, and again, jab, jab, jab. Keeping Tua on the defensive. Rachman dominating the fight with the stick. George Foreman sitting at home tonight always says, Roy, it's an easy sport if you have a jab. If you have a good jab, when the time comes, you can make your job extra easy. They talk about Tua having a tick-tock defense, supposedly to roll his head from side to side. But right now, he's just getting clocked. Rockman releases the right hand and then immediately pins it to his cheek, looking for the left hook coming back. Tua, who was active to the body in the last round, has not been able to observe Ronnie Shields' instructions to go to the ribcage in this round. Now he tries to get to the body. been one dramatic change in the heavyweight division over the past 10 years it is size nowadays david tua at 220 some odd pounds is a smaller heavyweight hasim rachman is the norm at 230 plus guys like lennox lewis and michael grant they're the future pushing 250 pounds of athletic muscle yeah heavyweights are heavy now <laughs> very oh good right hand by the Terrific combination by Rockman, hurting Tua as he stands in his corner and counter punches brilliantly past the Tua attack. Rockman looks like a different fighter from the one we saw against Obed Sullivan. Poised, patient, and now when he has Tua impaled on his left jab, letting loose a fusillade of hard punches to the head. And in round four, Larry, Rachman seen by CompuBox as having thrown 99 punches. That used to be three rounds for Rachman. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it so far? Jim, 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing, Hasim Rahman. You know, Jim, I tell you, when David Tua takes that step inside, okay, the rock hits him with a left jab, but then he drops that right hand on him. And that's a punch that's really doing a lot of damage. Watch David Tua, he'll take one step inside, and the rock will drop the right hand that murders Tua. Also, watch Rahman's defense. He's blocking all the two shots. One other thing real quick, the ropes are loose. Be careful. These guys could really come through these ropes. Which makes the size of the heavyweights now a bigger factor for the announcers at ringside. <laughs> Tough catch if Rockman comes through. Rockman is basically having his way here with David, David Tua, and this is not good for Tua because people don't realize it takes just as much out of you to absorb punches as it does to throw them. Well, when Tua is coming up and knocking everybody out, his limitations 
didn't look terribly daunting because his strengths were so strong. The vicious left hook, the head bobbing defense, the relentlessness with which he came at you. But now you see him trying to do it against a bigger, stronger guy. And this is a major change for David and a tough obstacle. And it's getting worse for him because now he's losing the fight inside and outside. Holding him off inside, stepping outside, and beating him from outside. Tua needs something big to happen for him sometime soon here. Or he's going to be in a bad situation. Hey, Bayabuchi did everything that Rockman is doing offensively. But Ibeabuchi didn't defend himself as well as The Rock is. I mean, Tua was able to get to Ibeabuchi and hit him a lot. He's not able to do that with Rockman because of what's coming back. Like that right there. And every time he lands a good punch, The Rock lands it right back. Three and four to one. seems to be confident in his, in his condition, too. He's fighting an intelligent fight. Intelligence runs in the family. He's got a brother in medical school. His father was an engineer. He's just been in the ring for five or six years. And showing us some real quality stuff tonight. Family wasn't at first certain that they were happy with Hasim's choice in becoming a boxer, but he was at the time the one member of the family who was getting in trouble and falling short of his potential, so they said, well, if he's devoted to this, let's let him go with it. And look what he's done. Just look what he's done. winner of this fight will be installed by one of the three governing bodies, the IBF, as the mandatory challenger for the winner of the bout between Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield. One never knows what will happen to title belts, which will be kept, which will be dropped into garbage pails, which will be stripped, etc., etc. But somehow or another, the winner of this fight is supposed to get a ticket to a heavyweight championship opportunity. First five rounds, it's been all Hasim Rahman. By CompuBox numbers, Tua landed 28 of 50 punches in round five. That's his best round so far. But still, Rahman doubled his punch output, throwing 99 himself. That's what happens when you work behind the jab and keep pumping it. about the moment, Roy, when I can imagine George, the consummate heavyweight himself, sitting here saying, David Tua needs to dispense with the fight plan, go inside and roughhouse, do anything to change the tempo of the fight. He at least needs to punch, but now, every time he sticks his arms out, he's getting caught with a big punch, so he's afraid to punch as much. But he has to punch. That's the only chance that he has. The way Rockman is fighting is a genuine revelation in the boxing world. Where David Tua has won some real respect. Rockman has never shown this kind of quality before. There you see him smart enough. To, Rockman was smart enough to walk Tua back to the center of the ring, so he doesn't start out against the ropes because his corner doesn't want him against the ropes. round fought at a relatively measured pace and again historically that's what Rockman likes although he's been setting a fast pace tonight he's comfortable when the punch count slows and he just leans all over guys and uses his big body to bluff them uh, <coughs> Rockman has been out. very comfortable on the ropes there you see comes out. he threads a nice left hook Right through to his defense. And and moves away rather than pausing to admire his work. Although that was to his best round, I thought. Well, more and more it appears that David Tua will need a 
second half of the fight comeback. Asim Rahman using a well-constructed plan to outbox Tua during the first six rounds of the scheduled 12-round fight. David Tua has just had his best minute of the fight and landed two big right hands over the top. Now Rockman jabbing him as Tua tries to come in with no head movement and a jab his way in. Rockman could be showing a sign of fatigue here, Jim. That's been his history. He tires in the second half of the fight. Tua lands the left hook to Rockman's jaw after first pounding one against the side of his neck. But Tua needs to go to work right now. This is the big moment he's been waiting for. He needs some more big things to happen, but he can't get careless. He has to take it one round at a time. Now Rockman has brought the hands back up, so he's not as open as he was. Shots may be hurting two or two. Rockman with an excellent uppercut backs two away and moves off the ropes. And goes back to the steaming jab. A stiletto in the Miami night for the big heavyweight, Hasim Rockman. A brief two a rally in the middle of the seventh round has been blunted again by the Rockman jab. I think the body shots keep taking everything that Tua has away from him. Now Tua lands a right hand to the chest. And comes back with a left hook up top. Rockman countering with a left hook of his own. This is a heavyweight fight. Here we see Tua, left hand a little bit long. That one, right on. Second out, second out. Here we see Rockman come back with his own left. You heard Lou Duva in the corner. I don't recall hearing this early in the fight, a 12-round fight at the end of the seventh round, and Duva is saying, you have to win by a knockout. This is the earliest knockout call I can ever recall. And I, I Adam think, gave the round to uh, David Tua. Go ahead, Roy. I think the reason he's telling him this is because he knows that he's not going to outpoint Rockman in a long fight. So he wants him to start trying to knock Rockman out right now. Well, and, and I think beyond that, if there's a chance still for David to gain a decision, the only way he can gain the decision is by stepping up his punch out foot and fighting more furiously with more activity. So Duba's appellation to it works on both levels. A, it gives him a chance to score the knockout he might need. B, it would help him to have a chance to win a decision because he's not going to get it fighting this way. why it's hard for Tua to do what's asked for. That jab has been a very discouraging tool to David Tua tonight. It's been the story of the fight. It's like having a good running game in football. When things are not going exactly the way you want, you just hand the ball off and you make a first down. Well, plus, as Floyd Mayweather Jr. said in our meeting yesterday, a good jab is your offense and your defense. Two good body punches by two. Right here is where David Tua is supposed to be doing work at, but he doesn't. He's so tired from absorbing all the punches until he just doesn't do anything inside anymore. Tua says that at the end of his workout every day, he likes to sit down in front of a mirror for about a half hour and just stare into the mirror, visualizing his hopes and dreams and how he responds to them. If he looked in the mirror right now, he wouldn't like the way Hasim Rahman has made his jab look. And here's a momentary pause to redo the tape around Rahman's glove. And Tua, who's thrown only 23 punches in the round, despite Lou Duba's urging that he must go wild. Has plenty of time to think about it as they work on Rockman. Well, what's going on is that in round eight of a 12-round fight, or I should say, yeah, right here in round eight of a 12-round fight, Hasim Rockman just got a a welcome one and a half minute rest for a guy who's had a tendency to tire down the stretch. It couldn't have worked out better. Why is David Tua holding on the inside? David Tua should be the guy that's busy on the inside. Because he doesn't like the way he's getting hit. <laughs> Fights change. 
when fighters don't like getting hit. And tonight, Tua is absorbing a lot of leather. to the body by Rachman. Another relatively slowly paced round. Don't punch. I don't care what you hit him. Hit the power on the right hand. He's leaning into a hook. All right, jab. jab. Short right Please hand. Get out of here. Put get your out power here. on the hook on the Second inside. Right Two-thirds of the way through this fight, Hasim Rachman is establishing himself along with get Michael out, Grant as the best young heavyweight in the world. But his it ain't status. over until it's over. Yeah, but you're right. At this stage, his status is skyrocketing, and Tua is diminishing. Harold, how do you have it through eight? Tonight at it's 78, 74, six rounds to two, Hussein Rahman. I gave rounds six and seven to, to uh, David Tua because he got inside, and, and the rock stopped jabbing, i tell you the truth. But you know, Jim, maybe I'm imagining this, but it's very strange. If you watch Rockman real close, like I watch him, half the time he ain't looking at Tua. He's looking all over the place. Watch his head. Watch his eyes. He looks at me, looks at you, looks at the corner. I'm telling you, if he takes his eyes off of Tua once too many times, he's going to get whacked. Actually, what I think he's doing is he's watching Tua's shoulders. He looks like he's looking over the top of Tua, but he sees Tua's shoulders. So he can tell when Tua's going to throw a big punch. Whichever shoulder dips or starts to come at him, he dips to that side to avoid the punch. Big, big right hand by Tua. And Tua's quicker with the right hand. He has less of a tendency to telegraph that overhand right. When he wants to throw his big left hook, he's got a major tendency to dip to that side and let you know it's coming. And that's what Rockman knows. But, but if Rockman can take a really good punch like that without showing any signs of fatigue or hurt, you have to wonder what, if anything, Tua can do to change this. The only thing that can change it, uh, Larry, is the element of surprise. You have to catch him with one of those big punches when he's not expecting the big punch. That could change everything. Well, I think it's going to have to be the right hand over the top, Roy, because more and more it appears the left hook has been blunted here. Stop, right. And Lou Duva sitting at ringside has a sick look on his face as he watches his heavyweight, David Tua, reduced to target practice part of the time by Hasim Rachman when Rachman elects to throw his jab. A good body shot by Tua. After one good punch, though, it's 10 seconds before he throws another good punch. Oh, oh. To the bell and Rockman is seriously hurt wobbling back to his corner. Lou Duber is in the middle of the ring, battling with the referee, and I have no idea why. <laughs> I mean the bell rang. This fighter got the clear shot. Right, and that's the one just as the referee was moving in to separate them at the bell. That yeah. first punch hurt two or two, though. I mean, hurt, um, Rockman. I yeah. thought it set him up for the second yeah. punch. That first punch did hurt Rockman. This is a real test for Rockman. All right, one minute after the left hook that exploded off the cheek of Hasim Rockman, David Tua gets a chance to try to capitalize. And Larry, like I told you, the element of surprise. Fight getting closer on the Letterman card. Tua going to work. Rockman not throwing. Tua slashing to the body with rights and left. Rockman in trouble. And the referee's going to stop it. Stop the fight. I, I believe that is a very bad stoppage. I 
totally agree. That's as premature as any stoppage can be in a heavyweight fight. You can recall at the beginning of this fight, I said, is this referee going to be able to control what happened? Yes, Rockman was getting banged around. Yeah, but these are heavyweights. These are heavyweights. He was ahead in the fight. He had earned the benefit of the doubt to be given a chance. What do you think, Roy? I think what Larry said is very, very true. The guy, you have to give the guy an opportunity. He worked too hard for too long for you to step in and stop him. He wasn't getting hit repeatedly. He had control of himself. He was getting caught with good punches, but you still have to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's well, working too hard and too So long. let's take another look at the end of the fight. And, and clearly, Roy, Tua was doing the damage. Oh, yes. Tua had him. He was hitting him with some good punches. He hadn't dropped him yet. He was catching him. But as you see, he's fighting back. Not many of the punches are very clean punches. He's still ducking punches. He's still very clear. He sees exactly what's going on. He's not giving up. He was slipping punches there. That is not a heavyweight fight stoppage situation. Sorry. Here it is at regular speed. You'll see what kind of damage Tool was doing. But you cannot say that Rockman was stunned or was out of it. He was in trouble, but he wasn't down, and he wasn't out. But a comeback victory for David Tua, who showed you a lot of what he was made of as he managed to reverse circumstances in a bout in which most everything was going against him. And he did exactly what I would have did, Jim. Once you get that referee close to watching, Tua did exactly what I would have did. He turned it on, and you hope that the referee will come in and stop it because this is your chance to try to gain back everything you've lost in that fight. So I don't blame Tua. I would have done the same thing because you know the referee wants to protect the guy. The referee is not doing this out of spite. He's just trying to look out for the other opponent. So Absolutely Tua was, right. Tua was very smart in going ahead and launching that attack the way he did. And he, he sealed the deal with his trademark weapon. Uh, it, he may telegraph that left hook, but when he lands it, <laughs> it makes its point. Yes, it does. 35 seconds of the 10th round. The winner by tactical knockout and new IBF Intercontinental USBA heavyweight champion, David Tua. Thank you very much, Jim. Why did you stop the fight? Larry, the guy could not defend himself on the ropes. He was getting, taking shots on his head nonstop. I didn't have a choice. We don't have a standing eight count in the state of Florida. I advise the fighters, if they are in the same situation, go down in one knee to get a standing eight, I mean, to get an eight count. When did you advise them to go to a knee? I advised them before the fight in their dressing rooms, both fighters, because we don't have we're watching here and so you're saying that he should have taken a knee and then right he could have here, survived right here i think this you see but none of those punches that punch landed but that punch didn't land i mean only one of those last three or four punches landed flush hey, from what i was seeing the punch was landing at one point the ropes held him from going down could you call if the ropes were keeping him from falling down couldn't you therefore call that a knockdown yes you can indeed you can however he was squatting on his thighs too and i didn't know if he's you know it was not very clear right here you see him the ropes barely hold he was sitting on the sitting middle on the uh, middle but you could conceivably have called that a knockdown he took three and four five six punches on the jaw unanswered all right so that your your feeling is despite the fact that he appeared to be winning the fight and even controlling the fight that that barrage of punches put him too much in danger he didn't look you know when i saw his face he looked a little bit dazed on me I was what about the punch at the end of the previous round that came immediately after the bell? Well, I heard the bell ringing at the same time a punch was flying. So it was right after the, seemed like after the bell, but I mean, it was un impossible to stop a punch like that. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations, David. First, did the punch that landed at or just after the bell at the end of the previous round set up the victory. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, for Tyler Tua, uh, when we need a longer, 
I'd like to thank God for giving me the strength and the courage to go through it and, and take care of business tonight. And, and only that, first and foremost, I thank Dino, you know, the, all the people at main events. David, let's for, talk about For working this fight out, I thank Ronnie, the sparring partner, Sam Hampton, and uh, Tim Knights for, for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, you're right, Larry. You know, um, I knew it was going to come because, you know, he, every time he was setting that left hand, left jab out there, he was coming on with that right hand, and he was putting everything into it. And I knew that the more I, the more I make him miss, the more tired I was going to get. And the sooner or later, I knew it was going to catch up. And uh, as you know, when I, when, I, when I was getting inside him, he was hardly doing nothing, you know, I knew he was breathing yeah, a little bit But harder. he seemed to be controlling and even dominating the fight to the point where at the end of the seventh round, Lou Duva was saying, you have to knock him out. I did just that. You did. Oh, Haseem Rahman. Haseem, you were in full control of the fight, it seemed, until he caught you with a punch at the end of the ninth round when you seemed to relax for a moment when the bell rang. Is that an accurate portrayal of what happened? Well, I thought the bell had already rung, but maybe I'm mistaken. But when you got two punches in the ring, when you have two punches in the ring, people bound to get buzzed from time to time in a 12-round fight. This is a championship eliminated bout. You're not supposed to rob the champion in a fight like this. I mean, if you look at the replay, he hit me with some shots, but he was missing some shots. I was coherent. I was still making the missed punches, and I was punching back. Let me ask you this. And that's, I'm 29. With, well, 29 wins with one robbery. And do, do you think it was a fair? Let, let's let's take a look at the end of the ninth round and you and you describe describe what happened. Good punch after the bell. A good punch. Yeah, he, he, he's right. a puncher. Were you, when you came out for the next round, were you still buzzed I was, from I was that not buzzed. I was not buzzed. I was not buzzed. I mean, the man is a puncher. I mean, man, I'm the I'm the champion. I deserve the respect as a champion. The man should not have jumped in there. It wasn't like he was hitting me and my hands was down. I was still defending myself. And it's a championship 12-round fight. You're going to start the fight in the 10th round? All right, let's take a look, and, and you can tell us what you see okay. in that final okay. future. I see him hit me with a punch. He missed the punch. He missed the punch. Good body shot. One body shot got it. He hit me with, it wasn't nothing on that good hook. Yes. Miss. 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 These, these Miss. are not solid Miss. shots. Miss. Miss. My hands up. My hands up. Miss. And, uh, man, oh, he Look missed it all. He missed four shots right in a row. There. And he stopped the fight. Right there. He, he, he right. missed four shots in a row and he stopped the fight. Let me ask you this. The referee said that he told both fighters. Oh, man, look at that ref. He t the referee said that before the fight, he told both fighters. If I'm hurt, take a knee. Take a knee. I wasn't, uh, obviously, was if I wasn't like defending that? myself, I would have took a knee. It occurred to you at that moment that you could have taken a knee? It occurred to me the whole fight that if I was ever in that, in that had the round continued, the round before, had it been a minute left in that round, maybe I would have took a knee. Will you try to protest the end of this fight and try to get a rematch? Man. Be filing with the IBF Man. immediately to that was, protest this that was decision a by I the was running, referee. I was running away he was with the winning fight. almost every round of I was this running fight. away with the he fight. dominating the fight. How can you fight. stop the champion the ref, like that? The referee had no right to stop the fight this time. We will demand an immediate rematch, and hopefully the IBF will give justice to this man. Thank you very much. What do you think? Jim.